Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is transport. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear transport used is to mean to take or carry people or goods, so these would be objects, things, from one place to another place. And, and generally, we're talking about someone using a vehicle like a car, an aircraft, maybe like a plane or a, a ship. A second way you might hear the verb transport used is to mean to cause someone to feel like they are in another place or in another time. So sometimes uh, you'll hear people uh, describe art. So this could be music, uh, could be something you've watched, maybe a play, uh, making you feel like you're in a different place or you're at a different point in time. You should know the verb transport is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all we need to do is add ing to form transporting. The past tense and participle form of this verb can be made by just adding ed. Our base verb transport ends with a t sound, a t t t. Right? So our past tense ending is going to make an id sound. We're going to add an extra syllable as we say this. It should sound like this. Transported. Transported. Okay. Now, there aren't any additional phrasal verbs that we need to discuss. So instead, we can focus on using our verb of the day in a couple different verb tenses. Today, we're going to practice the past progressive and the present perfect. We'll start with the past progressive. Some people watching this video and some of my, my own students have heard other teachers call this the past continuous or maybe they've used books that use that terminology. That's fine. Past progressive, past continuous, they mean the same thing. Um, I like saying past progressive. Uh, the two P's can help me remember how many parts I need to form this verb. And I'll talk about that in, in just a second. But it's really common to hear the past progressive used to describe an action that was ongoing during some period of time in the past. In many past progressive sentences, you will also see a simple past tense verb. And that simple past tense verb um, is usually thought to be interrupting the uh, action that was in the past progressive, right? So we think about one action going, 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 right? And then it gets interrupted by a second action. Uh, as I was mentioning before, so I like saying past progressive because the two P's help me remember I need two parts to form this verb. I'm going to use the past form of B. That's my first part. And then the second part is that ing form of the verb. Uh, you might remember uh, the uh, be verb has two forms in the past tense. It's rather unique, rather special. Um, so if my subject is I, he, she, or it, I'm going to use was and then that ing form of the verb. But if my subject is you, we, or they, I'll use were and then that ing form of the verb. Here's an example sentence. The train was transporting crude oil when it crashed. Okay. So the train, it's singular. It's like saying it. So I have was, then I have my ing verb, right? So here it's carrying, it's moving crude oil from one place to another. And the interrupting action here is a crash. Right? Something happens. If I want to make a negative past progressive sentence, again, I need to pay attention to my subject. Okay? Um, and, and then I will choose was or were, whichever form matches that subject. Then you're going to use not, then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example sentence. Many ships weren't transporting goods during the pandemic. Right. Um, you've probably heard or read something uh, about all of the many transportation issues that we had in 2020 and that carried on into 2021 and some might even say 2022 a bit. 
Now let's look at making a yes or no question in the past progressive. To do this, we start with was or were, whichever form matches our subject, subject comes next, and then we have the ing form the verb. Here's another example. Was the bus transporting any students? So um, perhaps someone's sharing something that happened and we're trying to understand as this event occurred, was the bus moving or carrying students? Now let's take a look at the present perfect. We use this verb tense in a, in a couple different ways. We might use it to uh, describe an action that started in the past and continues into the present. We might also use it to uh, talk about an action uh, that occurred at some unknown point in the past. The present perfect also has two P's in its name, and it's also going to have two parts to form this verb. So our structure here will be to have our subject, and then we're going to use have or has. If my subject is I, you, we, or they, I'll use have. And if my subject is he, she, or it, I'll use has. And then I use uh, our ED form of the verb because transport is a regular verb. An example sentence might be, this movie has transported me back to my childhood. So here's that second definition of the verb where uh, we're thinking about kind of uh, mentally, maybe emotionally traveling back uh, to an earlier period of time. So uh, whatever's the, the story that's being told, uh, maybe the, uh, the scenery, the props, uh, the way people are dressed, right, might make me think of my childhood. If I want to make a negative present perfect sentence, my structure, again, is to start with my subject. Then, based on what it is, I'll use have or has, then not, and then that ED form of the verb. Here's another example. We haven't transported any livestock this month. So, uh, perhaps this is farmers talking about moving their livestock uh, from their farm uh, to a facility where uh, the meat will be processed. Finally, uh, we can make a yes or no question in the present perfect. To do this, we start with have or has, whichever form matches our subject and that subject comes next, then we use the ED form of the verb. Here's another example. Have they transported the patient to the hospital yet? Okay. So again, we're back to that first definition of moving a person. Right. Now, uh, in my class this week, uh, we've been discussing uh, the word yet, uh, and that it's really common to hear this in the present perfect, uh, but we only use it in negative sen sentences, negative statements, and in questions. Many times we're using it to express um, this expectation, this belief that an action should be completed or needs to be completed. So here in my yes or no question, uh, if I'm asking someone this, I'm, I'm expecting a patient to be taken, to be carried uh, to the hospital, probably by an ambulance. Now let's spend a moment looking at some words that are related to our verb transport. And the first word we're gonna look at is just the noun form of this word. So same spelling, same pronunciation. When I use the noun transport, I might be referring to a system or a means of carrying people or goods from place to place. An example of this might be, what form of transport will they use? Right? So again, I'm wondering, is this a vehicle, an aircraft, a ship? A second way you hear the noun transport used is uh, to refer to the action of transporting something. An example of this might be, the railroad allowed for connection to the coast and transport of crops. So uh, this is a sentence that sounds like it could come out of a history book or, or maybe a history article explaining how uh, the railroad uh, allowed us to move goods like crops. Uh, another related word, pardon, is the noun transportation. 
When I use this noun, I could be referring to the action, the system, or even the process of moving goods or moving people. So an example of how you might hear this used, someone might ask you, do you use public transportation? So based on where you live, this could be a bus, um, it could be a subway, it could be some other uh, type of train or a light rail system that moves many people together at once from place to place. The last word we're going to discuss today is the adjective transportable. And I hope you see the suffix A-B-L-E, right, and immediately think able to be carried or moved. So able to be carried or moved. An example of this might be, the city is buying transportable ventilators to be prepared for another potential COVID wave. So um, here, uh, some, some organizations, some cities are doing this um, so that they could move ventilators that maybe are needed in one location um, to another after they're no longer needed at that first location. So this idea, they are able to be movie, moved or carried. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.